Hey there, my friends. Uh, welcome back to the Super Divorce YouTube channel. I am uh, on my way home here. Just got some gas at the local UDF and um, making my return trip home from the comic book shop from Nostalgia Inc. And I heard through the grapevine that some people were enjoying car videos. So I thought that I would try my hand at a car video tonight. I will also do the news when I get home. But uh, for right now, I am just going to go ahead and talk to you here while I'm driving home on this very beautiful evening here. A nice leisurely drive home. Uh, and what I wanted to talk about was comic books. Surprise! Comic books! Because I'm leaving... Well, I, I left the comic book store. I'm driving home from the comic book store, so I figure it's a good time to talk about comic books. You see. You see my logic there? You follow me? See how I might have come to that decision? So here's what happened when I went to the comic store today. If you watched my video from last night, perhaps you might recall uh, me saying that I was going to visit my local comic book shop because of this upcoming absolute carnage event that is going on uh, from Marvel starting in August. Though there is kind of like a precursor and the... What is that? I guess the, the first issue, I think it might just be a one-shot, actually. Uh, what's it called? I've got it in my bag over there, and now I can't even remember what the title is. Anyway, uh, a, a sort of a precursor tie-in for that series came out today, and I decided to go out and buy it. Now, while I was browsing through, I was wondering to myself, um... Is there anything else here worthwhile? And because I've kind of been out of the loop for so long, I asked the gentleman who was working at my LCS this evening. I was like, hey, uh, is there anything ongoing from Marvel or DC that you're reading? You know, anything worth checking out? And he was like, not really, man. He's like, I kind of, he admitted that he kind of uh, checks out a lot of the books he knows about them, but he's not really interested in any of them. And that is kind of where I was when I dropped off um, <clears throat> and stopped buying weekly the last time I was purchasing uh, on a regular basis. The old floppies, the individual issues. I stopped, uh, I stopped reading them because I was sinking an exorbitant amount of money on comic books that I really didn't care about. That I almost looked like, uh, I looked at reading them like, like it was kind of a drag. And I had all these books that I was buying because I had been buying them for so long and they kind of rope you in that way. They get you invested. If you start reading something and you know, you're into it at first and then it gets bad, you kind of try to stick it out hoping that it's going to get better. Hoping that like, okay, well maybe this, this writer is going to get the boot soon enough. And when he does, then, you know, things will be good again. And I, I won't be missing issues. If you're a collector, then, uh, that probably bothers you the way it bothers me. You know, you try and hang tough through poor writers and poor artists because uh, you like having an entire collection or something. Not that your collection can get too high now anyway, numbers-wise, because they reboot everything after, uh, you know, five issues or just cancel it. Anyway, um, anyway, so nothing worthwhile reading at the moment. And that's kind of how I, how I felt when I dropped out of my, my regular readership last time whenever that was, a year and a half, two years ago, I don't know, it's been a while 
since I purchased the uh, monthly or, or bi-weekly books on a regular basis. And uh, the guy at the comic shop said the same thing. He echoed that sentiment. He said, still that way now from Marvel and DC. And so as I'm browsing through, I saw a, I saw a Spider-Man book and it, the cover looked awesome. It looked like uh, throwback artwork, you know? And uh, I grabbed it and picked it up, not expecting the inside to look the same way that the uh, front cover did, but it did. It actually did. And I started flipping through all the pages and I was like, holy smokes, this is awesome artwork. Why have I not heard about this yet? And then I saw another Spider-Man issue sitting next to it with the same kind of deal going on. And I can't tell you the exact um, titles or the numbers. Like I said, I've got them in the bag next to me now because I picked both of them up. But here's the rub, guys. Here's uh, the bummer moment that I had. So the fellow that I just mentioned, the guy working at the comic shop, you know, I, I kind of flagged him down. And I was like, hey, hey, brother, uh, what is up with these? You know, what's going on here? It had like true believer. It had like a little banner at the top of uh, each issue that looked this way. And it said true believer on it. And I was like, what's with the uh, true believer stuff? Is this like uh, comics for people who love comics? Is that what they're doing here? Why have I not heard of this? And then, then he told me the news. And it is that uh, uh, the reason they look like throwback issues is because they are throwback issues. Reprints of old issues from when comics were comics. And, uh, and they're... One dollar a piece. Um, so that's cool. That's nice. I picked all of these up that I could find. They had several. I can tell you more about those later. But I picked all of them up that I could find there. And, um, well, what do you do about that, you know? It's like, on one hand, it's cool because you get, uh, you get a handful of comics for a price that, you know, um, seems extremely unreasonable these days. I mean, unreasonable that, uh, unreasonable in the sense that you would never expect to, uh, pay so little for a hand, a handful of comics. They're cheap. One dollar a piece. And it's not like they're printed on, on shitty paper or, uh, or like the, uh, the quality of them had been degraded or anything like that. It was like, um, it looked great. They looked like new comics with old artwork. <clears throat> so, uh, I noticed that those piles, all of the, all of those, uh, were down to like one or two issues. Meanwhile, um, you know, within arm's reach was a whole gang of, of Superman Year One by Frank Miller from DC's new Black Label. And I remarked, I was like, uh, well, it doesn't look like people are beating down the door to pick up Superman Year One. Pretty sad. And it didn't look like people were beating down the door to get many things at the comic shop. But these old issues, man, they look like they were uh, selling like hotcakes. Which makes me wonder, why not just make comics great again? Because clearly, uh, there's there's some sort of resonance happening with these rep reprints. People want to buy them. You open the book up. The artwork looks as good on the inside as it does on the outside, which is uh, pretty rare these days, unfortunately. But people like to see that. They like to open the book and not just see good artwork, but see action on the inside. You know, uh, artwork that grabs you and makes you want to know what's going on in the story. That's important. These books had that. 
But like I said, then I found out that they're not new at all. They're just reprints. Which doesn't, you know, it's not a complete bummer because it's a good deal at the $1 price point. But uh, it's sad that it takes the throwbacks to get people on board. Kind of like what happens in professional wrestling or what's happened in professional wrestling. In particular, uh, in the WWE, how it's like, the only time you get these massive ratings boosts is when they bring back all the stars from yesteryear because they haven't built up anyone new. Um, So it's too bad. Too bad wrestling is in that state. Too bad that comic books are in that state. But it's like, right here, you've got your focus group telling you, hey, go in this direction, guys. We like these things. We like these things. Why don't you hire good artists? Why don't you bring in good writers? And if they have to go back to the well and hire some of the old timers for a while, I think that that would be better. Because a lot of these guys, you might call them old timers, but a lot of them I doubt, you know, uh, are really that old. They could probably get a bunch of guys from like the 80s and 90s to come back, guys and gals, I will say that. It's not as if women were never in the comic book industry until 2019. Uh, There were female writers. There were female artists in the past. Just go back to the past. See what sold in, uh, in those days. Bring those artists, those writers back. And have them, have them teach a new generation the ropes. Have them, have them, uh, really show the new blood how it's done maybe some of these maybe some of these new writers and new artists can be saved maybe they just need to be shown the ropes they just need to be shown the way forward because what they're getting is uh they're getting a a bunch of garbage i believe they're getting garbage direction from their uh, publishers from corporate if you will People who don't know the first thing about comic books are trying to dictate the direction. Or rather, people, uh, maybe the heads of these publishing houses, if you will, do know their way around comic books. They remember when comic books were great. But the people who are giving them orders these days, they don't know the first thing about comics. But they're calling the shots. They're trying to pander to people who don't care about comic books. And it's costing them everything. It's it's, uh, brought the industry to its knees. But perhaps, uh, perhaps it can be saved. I think that's what Comicsgate is trying to do. The problem with Comicsgate, I've found at this point, is all of the, uh, the, the bitchy infighting you know, and then and then some unfortunate souls who think Comicsgate is something that it's not. They think it's just about controversy and uh, and stirring the pot and such. And to me, the reason I got interested in Comicsgate was because of the uh, the push for good artwork, the push for um, good stories, for comics to be fun. That's what I wanted. You know, that's where I was hoping Comicsgate would go, but it seems like it's become mired in a bunch of, uh, in a bunch of nonsense, as far as I can tell. And that doesn't mean that the spirit of Comicsgate is not continuing to move forward. I think it is, but it seems, uh, I I don't know. Do I want to say inaccurate? It seems a little inaccurate to call the positive part of Comicsgate Comicsgate, if that makes any sense. It kind of doesn't, I understand. Um, <clears throat> I'm having trouble articulating what I'm what I'm thinking here. It's like you had Comicsgate, the comic book movement, where fans were tired of being preached to, where fans were tired of uh, poor art and poor storytelling, and they were tired of uh, being told that they are a problem for not just 
accepting and digesting the crap that these companies were putting out. They were told that they're toxic for voicing their opinions and uh, and, and saying they're not going to spend $5 on a book where the artwork is subpar, where the storytelling is subpar. They're just not going to go along with it anymore. They're going to stop buying your stuff. And so uh, people started calling out the fans. The writers started calling out the fans. The artists started calling out the fans. The publishers did um, in, uh, in veiled ways. And I think that that was, that was sort of the, the advent, you know, that's what it was about. It was about people voicing their concerns. And then in the first wave of comics gate, I think artists, uh, artists deciding and writers deciding that they were going to do something about it, that they were going to come forward, hook up with these disenchanted fans and present to them options, give them uh, a real alternative, give them a chance to buy the books that they were longing for, you know, by creating them themselves and then going straight to crowdfunding, letting the fans make these books happen. And as you've seen over the course of the past uh, couple years, I guess, or year and a half, something like that, you know, you've seen that, uh, that the people will come forward. They will put their money where their mouths are. They will support books. They will su support good products and good creators. And, uh, and that's Comicsgate to me. That is what, that is the heart of it. But then there's also this, this sort of, um, Mr. Hyde, component to comic skate that is all of the infighting that seems to have popped up over the course of time that I first started to notice I think when certain creators within comic skate began getting jealous of some of the bigger name uh, creators within the movement I think there was some jealousy involved uh, people accusing some of the more successful artists and writers within Comicsgate of not uh, sort of sharing the spotlight enough or not pushing the smaller dudes uh, to a satisfactory degree. And that was, I think that was the first uh, sort of chink in the armor. And it's, uh, since then, you know, you've, you've got like feuding YouTube channels and and fans of certain artists and, and writers going after fans of others. And, and I, I look, I know that there's like this, uh, there's like the war campaign versus the people who are not on board with war campaign. And I don't have a side in it. I don't really, I don't, uh, because I've seen people on both sides that, uh, that don't really represent my views. I can't say that either side is is 100% in line with how I feel. So I'm just kind of watching as all this stuff plays out and uh, I'm like hoping it stops because I think it's it's a bunch of uh, it's a bunch of hogwash. I don't think it's necessary. Again, not condemning or getting behind anyone involved. It's just, it, a bunch of it seems silly to me. I read some of these threads on Twitter and, and see some of the things people uh, go back and forth about. Um, and it's just like, just let's just uh, regroup and forge ahead, you know, and get back to basics. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know what the solution is there. I don't know. Don't look at me, okay? I just, I'm just a, a guy talking as he drives along, you know? I don't have the answers. I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. I don't know exactly. I could be wrong about some of this shit. Maybe there's stuff that I haven't seen. Maybe I would take a side if I looked into some of this stuff further. I don't know. 
but I don't know that it's necessary to do so. I don't know that it's what, I don't know if it's what comic books need right now. I look at someone like Peter Samedi, and it's just like, that's, I don't know anyone who talks shit about that guy because he doesn't seem to get in the middle of this kind of uh, stuff. It's like people within Comicsgate support him. People like Alterna. People will stick up for him and his brand. But he doesn't, he's not come forward and supported like one particular faction within Comicsgate. I think that that's what creators need to do. It's like, that That would be like maybe the the... Perhaps that's part of the answer, is uh, the influential people kind of being like like that, taking taking his example. That might be good. Be like Peter Samedi, you know. Be like Alterna. Just have the support of everyone. No need to to uh, to try and um, whittle down your fan base to people who agree with you or don't because that was part of the uh, problem initially wasn't it wasn't that one of the reasons that people felt the need to break away from marvel and dc consumers because they felt like like certain creators were pushing them away were basically telling telling them that they weren't welcome to read their comic books anymore and that's what i'm seeing happen uh, from some of these people within Comicsgate. And maybe they're not saying it explicitly, but I think by some of the dividing and, uh, and some of the uh, posturing that's going on, that that's the message that's being spread, and it's causing this division, and I don't think it's good. I just uh, If Comicsgate is going to be the way forward, I think it needs to be about the books, it needs to be about the quality. It needs to get back kind of to basics, like I said, about what it was when it started. So that's that's that, okay? That's how I feel about that. And um, do I have anything else? I can pull over here. I can find a spot to pull off and show you guys what I picked up today give you guys a little rundown of my my pickups if you will bear with me for just a sec I'll go ahead and do that I didn't get a whole lot I think I spent around $12 which is one of the least expensive trips to the comic book store that I can recall in recent memory even though I hadn't been in a while before today uh, that's that's very very inexpensive. I really went in looking for one book, and I, I still came out with a not a huge stack, but here I'm gonna pull in. I'll pull in right here. Uh, all right. Now let's see what I got. Let me uh, let me show you here. I I got this checklist for absolute carnage. Here, if you're interested, this is the checklist. This is everything that's going to be coming out. And I suppose for a big event, it's not too much. I'm going to try and get all of this stuff. I. Uh, told them to go ahead and open up a file for me at Nostalgia Inc. And I was just like, just uh, just throw anything tying into Absolute Carnage in there for me, and I'll buy it. So, I'll report on this as I go along. It seems like it's going to be a pretty cool event, so I'll let you know. <clears throat> now, anyway, let me see, what all did I get? Just rummaging around here. Okay. Ah. Okay, so here's here's one. This is the True Believers Absolute Carnage. They're advertising that right there. Savage Rebirth. Now, what is this from? 
initially. This was originally published in magazine form as Amazing Spider-Man number 430. See, and uh, it's striking, isn't it? To see something like this. It just sticks out to you. It stuck out to me when I walked in and I saw this. Um, you open it up and the inside looks uh, beautiful as well. It's fantastic. It makes you miss the olden days. And what else? I got this mania this is uh, also a reprint this is a true believers number one not as much of a throwback as the one that i just showed you this was originally released as um, venom number one it doesn't say what the original release date was but i feel like i think i have this actual number one the original release I feel like this might have been 2000 between 2004 and 2008 at some point that seems about right I got uh, web of venom funeral pyre this is the one shot that is supposed to kind of lead in to absolute carnage and um, as for the inside of this one, I don't know. It looks okay. It doesn't look terrible. I've seen much worse coming from modern day Marvel. I picked this up for my son. He likes Invader Zim. He asked me to get him an Invader Zim comic today. And I don't know if any of you guys are Invader Zim fans. If you are, and you've not read the comic book, I highly recommend it. The Invader Zim comic is, uh, it's just as good as the show. It's like you're reading an episode. I mean, very, very faithful to the look and feel of the actual cartoon. And there's Mr. Wiener Face. I think my son will think that's fine. Come on, it's Wiener Face. But if you look at the artwork, I mean, it, <clears throat> it looks like, the, yeah, it's like any of these panels could just be still shots from the TV show. And they've been that way the entire time. I don't have every single issue. I think I've got maybe the first 15 or so. And they're up to, what number is this? 33. This isn't the newest one. But uh, they're around there in the 30s or early 40s. So I'm going to, I'll buy the trade versions at some point. Venom, Separation Anxiety. This is the True Believers number one as well. There's Absolute Carnage right there. They're pushing this one hard, it seems. But I mean, look at it. This was first published as... Originally published as, uh, what? Venom Separation Anxiety number one. But it's like you open this and uh, you just know. This is not how comics look anymore, unfortunately. But they should. If they would do this again, I think, I mean, look at it. Would you look at it? You just don't get this kind of stuff these days. It looks intriguing. Um, it's it's extremely well done. You can tell that you're dealing with a talented artist here. And, and just by glancing through, it's like important things are happening. You know what I mean? There seems to be uh, a sense of urgency going on through these pages. You need to read to find out. You know what I mean? And then lastly, this right here, this is where Maximum Carnage began. Spider-Man Unlimited. Uh, originally, Spider-Man Unlimited number one. 
I'm, I feel like I'm stealing uh, your boy Zach's gimmick here. I'm not trying to. I just happen to be in my car. Um, but, yeah, again, you flip through, and it's like, wow. You want to keep looking at this stuff. You want to stop on a page and examine it. I mean, that's that's a good feeling. That's what you want when you're reading a comic book. You don't want to just whip right through it. You don't just want to bounce from speech bubble to speech bubble and turn the pages as quickly as you can. You want to read maybe what's happening and then go back through and allow yourself to gaze at the artwork. Take in all the details. Uh, really see the finer things, you know? Like these nudie pictures on the uh, the cell wall here. Stuff like that. Even this small little this small little panel right here. Look at all the action packed in to this one little panel. I mean that's that's good shit, man. Isn't it? This is a perfect example of the uh, the concepts and the philosophy that Stan Lee talked about in How to Draw the Marvel Way. And I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you had to have read that book, even if you're not uh, professional artists. But he talks about what separated Marvel from a bunch of the other comic book companies back in the day, and it was like, there was this... There was this way of drawing things where it's like uh, actions were pushed to their sort of exaggerated limits. It's like, for instance, when you think of Spider-Man and Venom grabbing Carnage, you know, if you were to read that, uh, this panel, if you were being given the direction to draw this panel and it just said, Spider-Man and Venom grab Carnage and tackle him, it's like there's a really boring way of drawing that that you can imagine where maybe Spider-Man and Venom are both standing up they're standing up straight you know and uh, and you show the action like when it's first happening like at the beginning of the motion it's like that, that could be accurate you could show them sort of leaning forward as they were stepping and they're just kind of grabbing a hold of him and maybe Carnage is also standing upright or maybe he's leaning back just a little bit they're all kind of leaning these two would be leaning forward obviously Carnage would be leaning back a little bit to show the motion that he's like going in that direction but it hasn't fully developed the Marvel way was to make sure that if Spider-Man and Venom were tackling Carnage that you showed them like at the most interesting point of the tackle you showed them at the most exaggerated point of it when when there's no mistaking what's going on it's like they are grabbing him and taking him down to the ground it's like spider-man's legs up in the air you know you see uh venom lunging you see the movement lines like the whoosh you know this these movement lines uh sort of uh, trailing off behind both of them and uh, and like I said it leaves you with no question as to what's happening you don't have to stop and study the picture to figure out the movements or to figure out the action but you do want to stop and stare at at the picture to uh, to take in all the detail and just to let let the picture really sit in your mind and and animate you know uh, it's just a, a really cool it's a really cool philosophy and it's something that I think is missing from a lot of modern comics when you check out action sequences and you see the way that some of the characters are drawn I'm thinking of one particular that I just saw the other day where uh, Lady Thor Jane Foster is using Mjolnir and she's hitting someone in the face but but the face is like turned the wrong way for the direction that the hammer um, hit from, you know? It's like, let's say uh, 
there was a person standing in front of Jane Foster and she took Mjolnir and, and she uh, brought it from her side and swung it up and to her right with her right hand, you know? So a, a sort of um, a backhand motion if you're playing tennis, you know, coming up and smacking to the right. But the face, rather than turning the direction it would have been smacked, was turned the opposite direction. Uh, like, you know, the head was, uh, like the, the person's face was smacked with this hammer. And then, um, and then it just didn't move. It actually went in the opposite direction somehow. Stuff like that that just doesn't make any sense. Stuff that if you stop to think about and examine and plan out for more than two seconds, you'd realize how stupid it comes across and how it takes the person reading out of the action because then, like I said, instead of something like this where you're stopping to admire it, you're stopping to try and figure out how what you're seeing even took place, how it's possible. And in the case that I was just talking about, well, it wasn't really possible. It was just a mistake. It was a it was a bad, um, a bad design. So anyway, guys, uh, this is longer than I planned to go with this video, but there you go. Um, my little stack of books here. A nice little stack today. A nice modest stack, but a stack nonetheless. Right there. One, two, three. Four. Four, five, six. I got six books for uh, around twelve bucks. Like I said, um, try to recall a time when you got six books for twelve dollars. That's a good price right there. Imagine, imagine if all their books were priced at one dollar, and they looked like this on the cover. And then they looked like this on the inside. I mean, it'd be over. Comics would be back. But I don't know. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have anything to add to this discussion, then please do so in the comments below. And please look forward to um, a little bit of a news video coming up later this evening. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.